you with us. And Sam Webb joins us now. Uh, he uh, runs a Michigan uh, website and YouTube channel, obviously covers the Wolverines very closely, also a uh, host on uh, radio in Michigan. And uh, what, a, what a week it's already been, Sam, and uh, some of the comments flying back and forth. Uh, Alabama acting like the, the Connor Stallions is still alive and well. Put it all into perspective for us as we say hello to you. Hey, Paul, glad to be here, man. Uh, perspective is you can't reason with people who think you need the scout scrubs, which is essentially what this whole uh, you know sign gate thing was all about. Michigan had to steal signs to beat Bowling Green and East Carolina and UNLV. These are the teams that Michigan rolled over by what three, four touchdowns. So maybe Connor Stallions gave them a a, a seven point you know advantage. So instead of beating them by four touchdowns, they would have beat them by three. I, I think it's one of those things that is easy to grab hold of. It's not to say that Michigan didn't do anything wrong. I mean, if if this everything that we have heard about Connor Stallions is true, that is a violation. I think the level of violation is what I think people and especially the Michigan players uh, take issue with the the notion that their success was wholly contingent upon this sign stealing thing, I think is grading them. And if you're looking for a chip on your shoulder as a team that's been in the playoff for the last couple of seasons, I think it's that. I think it's that people have used that as a vehicle to sort of undermine their success. And so now you go out like you did against Penn State, like you did against Ohio State. Now you got a chance to do against Bama and just show them you didn't even need the signs to beat those teams. And let's see if they can do it again. Sam, we hear, especially here, so much about Alabama, you know, the first class program, Nick Saban, Goat, all that. But which brings me to why, why do you think uh, Alabama made an issue out of this, considering even, even the, the most severe critic of, of Michigan and, and Jim Harbaugh knows that part of the, that, that part of the equation is over. There, was there really a need to, to talk about changing signals and a uniform iPad? Uh, I mean, I. It just seemed over the top to, to a number of people. Yeah. What about you? I mean, it's ironic. So <laughs> you're worried about Michigan maybe having access to your your practice materials, your signs, or what have you, based on iPads. You just hired George Hilo. So like you got <laughs> you got the you got the Intel machine right there in house. So I mean, I, I you know, I can't you can't really get caught up in it. I, I think some of it is gamesmanship. I think the other part of it is. You know, it, it it heightens the focus of your team. I think the other part of it is, and you know this, Paul, you've been around these coaches, you've been around Nick. Insanely paranoid, all these coaches are. That's why you do have, you actually had coaches who were saying that this was a player safety. Insanely paranoid. So I think all of that kind of plays into it. At the end of the day, I think it's much ado about nothing. Just like if, you know, with, with the Hilo thing, if George Hilo winds up being, a a differentiating characteristic in this game uh, a a factor that was so hugely in Alabama's favor that it contributed largely to their success that's a Michigan problem that's not that's not a rule violation or anything like that's Michigan's fault for not being prepared for not switching things up in a manner in which you would think a team at that level would switch things up when they're going to play other top competition so i think this ipad thing again it's it's insanely paranoid gamesmanship Harbaugh had his players throw their iPads out too uh one of the Roman Wilson was just talking about that you didn't show it in the clip but he was just saying hey coach Harbaugh started talking about this back in November and he just had us throw out our iPads uh this week as well so all the I guess I guess it's all the teams in the playoff are going to throw out their iPads now so Sam let, let me get to what I think is the may, maybe a, a factor that everybody is, is looking past but you've already alluded to and that's the chip on the shoulder they're the number one team in the country they have the the advantage from a point spread standpoint, even the power ratings, but get go deeper on the fact that Michigan seems like we, we're di we're being disrespected, uh, especially by our opponents. Yeah, man, I think it's funny as you, if you watch early in the season, Michigan they were rolling over these teams that they apparently, allegedly, supposedly needed signs to beat. Then when they started rolling over them afterwards, so afterwards it was Michigan State and Purdue, the teams immediately after. Connor Stallions was let go. Oh, well, now you're beating up on teams you're supposed to beat up on. I mean, which, which is it? Now you get to the end of the season, which was clearly the meat of the schedule for Michigan. And the issue wasn't signs. I don't even think it was the strength of, of schedule as much as it was 
the health. Strength of schedule has something to do with it, but you had a team who got really banged up and especially at the quarterback position late in the season. That's when the struggles really started to happen. So you, you had injuries heading into the Penn State game, but coming out of the Penn State game was when J.J. McCarthy was injured. Of course, you had Harbaugh being out, and that's adversity too. But J.J. McCarthy barely practiced leading up to the Maryland game. I mean, they, you barely could walk during the week. So here you had a guy who goes out on light practice, clearly not 100%, clearly can't run the football, and you got to figure out a way to still win games when a major component of your offensive arsenal is down. And they figured <laughs> out a way to do that. Now he's healthy, and so the the thought is that all of their weaponry is going to be at their disposal, and we'll see what that looks like when they take the field in the Rose Bowl. Sam, so let's let's get to the, the heart of the matter. All, all this other stuff ceases to really exist come late Monday afternoon. Uh, do you give Michigan an advantage in this game based on what I'm, I, I think I'm hearing from you? Yeah, I do. I do. I think uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, first of all, I respect Jalen Milrow a lot. I, I mean, I think this is one of the best stories in college football. I heard him go out there. He was talking about how Bill O'Brien told him he shouldn't even be a quarterback. I'm not. I think Bill O'Brien's been overrated since he was at Penn State. Just my opinion. So I was. I'm rooting for the young man to to, to go out and show that he can do the job. But I don't think he's just talking about Bill O'Brien. I think he's talking about Tommy Reese too, because he did get benched early in the season for a guy who couldn't even play in Notre Dame, who's playing lacrosse right now, and he put that guy in over Jalen Milrow. So I'm giving him a lot of credit for what he's emerged as as a quarterback this season. But I think Michigan has the advantage at the quarterback position when J.J. McCarthy is healthy because he can run the ball too. He was the key to Michigan's run game completely opening up. The fact that he can get to the perimeter on run plays, he is a legit threat to uh, on a lot of those uh, a lot of those zone read plays to to take it a long way. He's a legit four or five guy, and you can see it on film how teams respect him so much that it opens up running lanes for the running back, and he is a plus passer. He was one of the most he was the most efficient passer in the country, of course, until late in the season where you start getting all the injuries racking up. Now with him healthy. I think you got the two-way go at the quarterback position. I think that's truly the difference. Yes, Michigan is going to want to run the football. Yes, we saw some teams run it against Bama like Auburn, and Michigan is going to do that. But the key to this game, the difference, biggest difference in this game is going to be J.J. McCarthy, and I think he's the reason Michigan is going to win. Well done. Fantastic conversation, Sam. We appreciate you uh, coming on board and, and saying what few of our callers have said about Tommy Reese. Most people have concluded that that was all by design. You bench your starter and you uh, go down to number three on your depth chart and it was all a hidden plan by Nick Saban and Tommy Reese. I don't think so. I think I think Nick with the Tommy Reese has said, you know what, man? Th this is how we're going to do it. Because you know this, at Paul, you've been around Nick Saban a long time. You see how Steve Sarkeesian is running his offense in Texas. You see him doing all that tricky stuff at Bama. You gonna run? You can run your offense, but you are gonna run it with some parameters when you're playing when you're coaching for Nick Saban. And Tommy Reese was coloring outside the lines when he benched his quarterback. I think Nick. This is my opinion, speculation. I think Nick kind of had to give him a come to Nick meeting and tell him this is how we're gonna do it. Put my quarterback back in the game and let's go. And you've seen things start to work better ever since. Fantastic conversation with Sam Webb. Thank you very, very much. We'll see you out there tomorrow. Sam, we appreciate you coming on. Much more to come. We've already had a pretty wild first hour with Roy Wood Jr. If you missed it, I feel sorry for you. Uh, Sam Webb, we'll take a short break. Uh, Kentucky has gone down to Clemson and literally blowing uh, several leads. And 21-10 was the biggest. Uh, that is a loss that will sting into the offseason. Another ball loss for Mark Stoops. Mm-hmm.